Mishler, Dr. Yorker, while I'm trying to fix this technical issue, yeah. would you please uh, let us know why we're here today? We're talking about a, a very special event that we're bringing to the Cherry Hill area on June 12th. Can you lay it out just uh, a little sure. bit for each of you, please? Do you want to start a little bit and I'll follow through? Well, June 12th, not only my mom's birthday, but we're going to be doing a program on King's Highway, 498 King's Highway. That's North King's Highway in Cherry Hill inside of a real estate facility. Um, Kevin and Andy, some of the hardest working real estate people I know, are sponsoring this program. And the program is specifically about metabolism, how to increase your metabolism. I'm going to be doing the exercise portion. Dr. Disher is going to be doing the nutrition and medical concepts associated with weight loss and maybe even obesity also. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's invited to come out. It's actually no cost for the program. It's going to be 7 p.m. on June 12th. 498 North Kings Highway. And uh, we're going to go through some, it was Andy had recommended. We're going to be going through that night. And um, that's what we're doing here today. Yeah, we're going to talk First about it. And, and I'm hoping that we can kind of clear up some of the myths about what diet you need to do, what food you need to eat, how much exercise you need to do. Maybe find some simple things to help us kind of boost our metabolism, keep us healthy without really having to struggle or be too miserable. A lot of times people get all excited about it and then they get so fired up right. that it becomes overwhelming and then they just quit. So we're going to go over like basics, Simple but then things. we're also going, depending on the group and the questions, we're going to go over some of the high-end stuff, but these are things you can do on a daily basis that really we all should have been taught. Maybe in school, maybe right. from our parents, but somewhere before we were in adolescence, we should have known all this information. And it's missing in the public's eye. It is, this. and some of it is pretty new information, so when we were kids, we didn't even know. True. Some of these things, a lot of it is pretty new information, new studies have come out, showing things that help metabolism, showing things that even can hinder metabolism. Yeah. This That's is awesome. crazy stuff. I always hear a lot of people like, uh, you know, I'm speaking of my mom's birthday, that is that day, like a certain generation, they're like, oh, I never exercise. I don't want to perspire. It was right. like a generation of like, you know, half the population is thinking they never had to exercise. And um, they're paying the price for it now. They are. They are. They are. And, they are. Um, and then there was a lot of false information that was out there. there. Was. And then sometimes what you thought was the most cutting edge information changes over time. It does change. And that's why it's important to have uh, professionals that keep up to date with right. it. Right. Um, and agree. experience with a lot of different people because there's no necessary, necessary like, cookie, cookie cutter program. There but is. There are some basics that we all need. There are some basics. I know. I knew that when I was growing up, um, the rule of thumb, and mom, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry, but my mother never wanted to sweat, That's mess up her hair, right. and she did not want to break a nail. And unfortunately, mom, I love you, but she's having a lot of issues with her joints now Interesting. because she just really didn't keep up her strength. Mm -hmm. um, she started later in life to exercise, and I'm not to say it's never too late. It's never too late to start exercising or taking care of your health, but it definitely made an impact that she just... Really do not want to break a sweat. Yeah. Ever. That's exactly yeah. what I think it is a generational yeah. thing. Women don't perspire or something. Women don't like no that. women it's don't sweat, don't they sweat perspire. perspire. Right. Like right. It's a weird euphemism. <laughs> we all sweat. Right. That's and, right. And, and I agree. I remember the same thing. And of course my dad said if he's in such great shape he doesn't have to exercise because he looks great the way he he's is. He's already perfect. But he went into like a looks thing. Not That's interesting. Thing. And right. that guy is twenty almost seventy nine years old. Hopefully he doesn't care he gave his age. Um, you know, retired medical doctor, right. lieutenant colonel Air Force. Wow. He's a healthy guy, he doesn't take any medication. Maybe he but, has um, perfect genetics. Well, I hope so, because that means I got hands. That means you have some of them. <laughs> That's right. It's good for something, thank God. That's right. So, guys, uh, just a little background before we're us all together. Uh, my name is Andy Weintraub. I'm a realtor in Cherry Hill. I'm with Home Smart First Advantage. And uh, Kevin Zenstein is a friend of mine with Allied Mortgage. Uh, he actually uh, is sponsoring this event. On, uh, and I'm crouching over, I might need a chiropractor. Uh, I don't know if you know him, but uh, uh, Kevin volunteers. Kevin and I thought it'd be fun to sponsor this event because we, we love to give back to the community. And although Kevin's looking for mortgage clients and I, I help people buy and sell homes, uh, this is a great opportunity to help, first of all, two friends, uh, Dr. Dishler and uh, Dr. Yorker, but also to help the community at large, and that's very important to us. So, uh, Kevin Zensin, if you're watching, uh, thank you. Uh, maybe you'll come in here uh, to this office one day. As a friend, hope not. A, maybe maybe as a client, because you can learn a lot of great stuff about your health. 
And uh, in any event, I'm going to shift back now to Drs. Dishler and Yorker, uh, my two friends and two professionals, and they're going to be speaking to us on June 12th at 498 Kings Highway North in Cherry Hill about firing up your metabolism. Mm -hmm. And this is important, guys, because, you know, I, for one, am 46 years old. Camera's back on you. And I feel, you know, I don't know what, what I should feel, but I don't feel as vital as I used to. I'm gaining weight. I don't get to work out as much because I'm a little bit more lethargic and, you know, it's tough. So what, what can we do about that? Well, I can, I what are we going to talk about at the event? Right. Well, something that I think is really important for people to know is that there are a lot of things that control um, your metabolism. Some things you can control, some things you can't control. So we kind of have the environment. We have what we put into our body, how much we move, and a lot of other things that are things we not really suspect, but that do affect your metabolism. And one thing I find that patients tell me all the time is they say, you know, I never had a weight problem. I have always been a good size. Size. I was an athlete in high school. I worked out in college. You know, and or I just never had to worry about my weight. And then I turned 40 and everything changed. Why is that? And this is a really, I'd say I hear this probably every day that I'm in an office. And it is a well-known fact, which is more recently well-known fact, that with every passing year, your metabolism slows down. So basically, to stay the weight that you were in college or in your 20s, you have to eat a lot less. Even if you're still exercising, even if you're still really active and have an active job, you basically have to continuously eat less. And in fact, my joke is that if I live to be 90, I'll down to three crackers a day. <laughs> That's it. But that is something that you know is a chronic thing that patients are frustrated about. It makes a lot of sense back. I know a lot mm -hmm. of times patients will say, you know, they may be talking about metabolism or weight loss or mm -hmm. trying to muscle build. Uh, or maintain muscle, or they'll have a problem. They'll go. Do you think it's not possible? It's not possible. This, this is, is causing problem, right? Because I've been, I've been doing, doing that my whole life. This is and this is a new thing for me. Change, change. Being on these things, I've been on this diet forever. Right, right. All of a sudden, I'm gaining weight. Wait, wait, wait. It's like with every with every single person who comes to the room, they think that to maintain weight, you just have to eat less. I mean, that's. One of many things, but yeah, you can't eat like you used to eat. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, and that's what you specialize in. Is really it is what I specialize in. I mean, it's part of what I do. It's it's really, and I like to look at the whole patient. Look at, you know, there are so many different things, even medications that patients take for, for really basic things, like cholesterol and blood pressure, which they need to take. Some of them are more prone to causing people to gain weight or slow down their metabolism or actually cause some exercise intolerance and fatigue. And so really sometimes you just have to kind of look at the person's whole picture, their medication, their life, their diet, what they're doing, and fine tune and, and tweak some little things to yeah. get them healthy. I, I, think about Dr. Yorker. Well, I think oh. about, yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, I mean, how does exercise affect metabolism? I know, you know, diet, I try to speed it up by eating, I don't know, spicy foods. I don't know if that's a, uh, a myth or what, but, you know. No. Exercise so is that okay? Thing. Might, it might make you go to the bathroom more. Right. <laughs> okay. It gives you reflux. It could give you reflux right. going the other way. As far as exercise <laughs> okay. goes, when I um, and my background from from the eighties was in exercise science. That's what my bachelor's of science degree is in. And a lot of the information we learned way back then is still the truth now. But there's a lot of things that are new that have been added to it. Uh, whenever I look at somebody and the type of activities they're doing and we got to look at, obviously, if there, are there any injuries first, because there's limitations to start with for some people. But once we have certain things cleared by either their family doctor or us, um, then we can kind of actually move them into the program. Some people are already coming in with a certain level of fitness. Some people are beginners. Some people maybe like our moms are talking about and never did it. And they need to know how to start. start. You know, there's a lot of articles out there. There are programs out there. There's these out there. And really, it has to be put together for some people. Um, I generally look at people and I say there's usually like six things that we control can control there's how we sleep there's how we eat there's what we drink there's how we rest and, and what which actually goes with sleep there's how we think and then there's our activity level and the way we breathe so when I start with exercise I personally like to start with breathing other people don't understand that the diaphragms in the belly what that's actually takes the oxygen in from the outside world and how you stimulate your body by getting maximal oxygen in, maximal waste out by breathing with this core in the belly itself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are chest breathers, which stimulates stress, stimulates what's part of the, what's called the uh, 
sympathetic nervous system, or so-called fight or flight, right. versus parasympathetic. So, like, if you're a chest breather, which happens a lot when you're concerned about your core, it's like you suck your stomach in, and you start breathing in your chest, you're actually stimulating okay. the stress reaction of your body. And this is going to, in the long run, keep your most weight gain. Exactly. And it doesn't make you feel very good either. And you're not getting maximum oxygen, you're not getting maximum waste out, and you're not using your core to breathe, which is something you're doing all day long, so you might as well utilize that as an exercise. So that's the You know, it's funny. Uh, but you mentioned, you know, suck your stomach in, do the, do the breathing. I know that you'll go over that, hopefully, uh, that night. So people actually walk out with actionable, you know, uh, items. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm used to sucking my stomach in. And I remember in fifth grade, I'm going to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bear my soul. And I hope my friend's not watching. I'm actually not going to share their name. But in fifth grade, a friend of mine said, you're fat to me. And, uh, you know, I was never this most slender of people. And I can imagine some of my friends out there laughing. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy with who I am, even though I am, uh, you know, probably a little bit overweight uh, on the medical scale. Um, but since that day, I've been, I, I just naturally now, I just hold my stomach in a little tighter. It's actually giving me strong, a strong core, but I don't breathe. A lot, of, a lot of people will have those sort of turning points when they remember when they had that first like traumatic episode associated with body image and awareness. Uh, I can remember something very similar. I weighed over 170 pounds when I was 11 years old. Wow. It's pretty big for a wow. short guy, close to a 40 inch waist. So they put me on the front line of the football team when we had full contact. What was your bench? Apart. The issue with football was by the time I became high school level, you know, our quarterback, Terry Elise, actually made it into the pros for the Jets, so you know who, who he is. Um, I weighed 120 pounds by the time I got to high school, so I wasn't going to make that team anymore. So I was your bench? Fit, but was unable to play that sport and to gymnastics. That's a whole other subject. Makes uh, sense. Once you're holding your belly in, there's nothing wrong with holding the core tight, but you can hold the core tight and breathe from your belly at the same time. And that's, the kind of, so, that's a perfect example of somebody – may not hold their body tight and we're going to show them certain things about breathing other people are going to hold their core tight and we're going to show them how to do the same thing but the way that they're doing it um okay you know let me let me ask you this um actually i, I want to make sure because facebook is, has been weird today guys and and obviously you know my goal in, in that i'm working the technical aspect even though i'm a real estate agent and an investor um you know i love the marketing piece i love facebook live if you've seen me before do a facebook live I mess up something every single time because I try something new. But today we had it going. It was perfect. And then Facebook kind of went a little hanky. So if you're watching right now on, on either Dr. Dishler's feed or on my personal feed, I don't know if Scott shared it, can you just write something in the comments, uh, hello or can't wait, or just say the word yes if you can hear us. And if you'd like to help Dr. Dishler and Dr. Yorker, of course, um, hit a heart or like this, this uh, live feed and then share it on your page. Just hit the little share button, uh, but just write yes if, if you're actually uh, watching this. I'll see if it's maybe my Facebook or, but, uh, or yours. But back to you guys, uh, Dr. Dishler. So, uh, you know, I'm good at losing weight sometimes. Hey, Todd Yorker, thank you. Uh, older brother, younger brother, Todd Yorker. I'm the oldest. He's in Florida. Oh, in Florida. Todd, did, uh, is, is what your brother saying is it true i mean he tells me he used to bench like 480 or something in in, in 10th grade i don't know todd I don't, I don't know if i believe him or not uh oh there's uh todd let us know in the comments if you would please billy presman is watching hey billy what's up brother beth nat uh but dr yorker you know i'm able to lose weight sometimes right i go up and down the scale i prefer to to lift not that i have really for a couple of years but when i do lose i gain it right back quickly you know what what will we learn just a, a nugget what we'll learn on the 12th about that. Um, so you're talking about you you lift and, and you're lifting weights and you, your weight fluctuates. Okay. I mean, usually when people have a lot of fluctuation in weight, the, the little, a little known fact, which is kind of freaked me out when I first learned it, is that people kind of live at a set point of weight. It's, like, it's a weird term called a fat mass set point. And even if it's not the right set point for you. It, whatever weight you've been at for a long time, your body gets kind of used to. So what will happen is once you lose a nice chunk of weight, a 10 pound, a 20 pound, your body's hormones say, there are certain hormones that are not the hormones you, you really know, but they're different ones, leptin rather than some weird hunger hormones, that, that really go off track. 
because they want mm. to get back up to that weight, even if that weight was not an ideal weight for you. They want you to get there because they think that that's your normal. So there are a lot of things you can do to kind of help your body lower that set point so that you don't have that tendency to keep regaining the weight. So it's a pretty normal phenomenon. You will get hungrier after you lose weight. Okay. Right. How long do you have to hold that set point for it to well, become guess, like a new set point? Uh, it, it actually takes at least a year for the hormones to start coming back to normal and calming down and not making you feel starving all the time. Right. Um, so you and have that, like, I just lost 20 pounds, I feel great. And then you feel great, but then your hormones change. Like, if you lose 15% of your body weight, the hormone that makes you feel full drops by 65%. So you feel, you don't feel full after eating even what would normally make you feel full. This is why sometimes mm. people lose weight, and then they gain not just what they, the 20 pounds back, they gain another 10 on top of that. So it really does take at least a year, up to six or eight years, to kind of reset that set point. But there are some things that you can do that are really not that hard to help your body kind of equilibrate. And that's what we're going to go And that's what we're going to talk about. The thing socio-exercise that relates with that, Andy, is um, a lot of people, when they do exercise, you know, they get real, at the beginning they start off slow, hopefully, and don't injure themselves. Then they get into this routine, and they get this routine, they start feeling better. And then something comes up, they take a break, or mm -hmm. they have a small injury, where they take a week off, and then two weeks right. off, and they want to go on this hot and cold exercise thing. Right. And then you have some people just thought, you know, my body looks fine muscle-wise, where, where the typical, I don't want to big build, right. how many people have you heard I say, I don't want to build big muscles, big, so. but then you got right. people trying to become big that can't, even though they're pushing it to try. I mean, it's too hard to right. become big. Um, the key, hmm. right, do the right exercise program so that you develop your body the way you want it. Mm -hmm. um, when you're not, one of the things that I share with people that don't exercise or have these fluctuations with exercise is if you don't tone your body on a weekly basis, okay? Right. Meaning you should be doing a minimum of one to two body parts of fatigue exercise per week. If you actually let two weeks go by, you start to lose muscle tones. And it doesn't have to be a whole body workout. It could be something for those that are beginners as doing maybe chest on Monday. Okay. Uh, abs on Tuesday. Right. Shoulders on Monday. I heard that. For a minute. And then if you want to start to have growth or uh, an increase in muscle tone, you start to do it two to three to maybe four times a week. But you never want to do the same muscles two days in a row. So the point here is as you become a certain age, um, Oftentimes, somewhere around 26 years old for a woman, this is the research that I've seen, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and 28 as a man, and that kind of, so basically like the 20s, if you don't do muscle toning, you're going to lose about a half a pound of muscle a year. And at first, it doesn't look like much because it's a half a pound, especially if you're gaining right. fat. You'll get on the scale and go, I'm right. still my same weight, but then 10 years go by, you've lost five pounds of muscle. And that's a big problem. Mm. Five, it really is. Yeah, five pounds of muscle will they burn a certain amount of fat just because you have it. It's like having an eight-cylinder engine that burned a certain amount of gas, and now you have a seven-cylinder engine burning in that same mm. in that same body one eighth less just because you don't have the muscle. Wow, that's amazing. And um, then, you know, I want to get back to my wedding weight for women, you know, that right. kind of thing. And then they realize when they get to that weight. That was 30 years ago. They had already lost mm. 15 pounds of muscle. They go back to that weight. They can't figure why they don't have the toe loose to have. Right. So, well, we have we have a. Uh, oh, sorry. We have a we have a few questions. Day and kind of field the audience also to get an idea of like who in that audience is interested because there's so much information. We want to make sure we give it to the people that are actually at the program. So we have a few questions, and I really appreciate it. I know that. I'm in the other room, you know, originally I was in another location, but this is our solution. And there's a little bit of a lag time, but I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Uh, first of all, if you're, if you're just joining us, uh, this is a Q&A with uh, Dr. Elise Dishler, who is a uh, weight management uh, specialist, and uh, Dr. Scott Yorker, who is a chiropractor. Um, I, I've been to see Scott. I had a dislocated shoulder when I was 19. My friend Andy London uh, dropped a, a lot of weight. Uh, I was doing a military press and screwed up my shoulder. And Dr. York was the first person in 25 plus years to actually help. And uh, Dr. Yorker Scott, that was amazing. I, I tell everybody about that. Um, Dr. Dishler, I would love to, I know that you're not just weight loss management. I know that you you also talk to people about overall health and 
how to benefit your, because not everybody's overweight, but people still need to know how it affects different things affect their heart rate and their, you know, blood pressure. But guys, we're talking about an event on, uh, on June 12th at 7 p.m. at 498 Kings Highway North. Fire up your metabolism with, with these two amazing people uh, and both friends of mine. And um, it's it's going to be in Cherry Hill. Kevin's Zenstein sponsoring with Ally Morgan. I'm a sponsor. Uh, and uh, it's going to be great. So I'll post the event up a little later back at, back at the top of this. Uh, post, but um, Dana Marie had a question for you, uh, Dr. Dishler. Is obesity, and th these are nuggets, guys. We're going to come back and answer this stuff more fully. You can ask questions for free. We'll have food. I, Kevin and I want pizza. I'm sure that we'll be shot down. Maybe it'll be veggies, uh, veggie sticks, maybe some. Scott, I know you want pizza. You're with Kevin and I, but Dr. Dishler. Yeah, there you right. go. I thought it was all kale sound. You'll be. You'll be the arbiter of that, Dr. Dishman. But Dana Marie has a question. Big slice of watermelon, and then there's going to be different fruits on yeah. top of it to look like pizza. So the cool. watermelon. Oh, yeah. Try you better start working right now. You only have a week. Pizza made up. You like blueberry toppings, or did you like raspberry on your watermelon pizza? Uh, cheese and sauce are good, but that's why I, I guess oh, okay. I am. So, so Dana Marie had a question for you, okay. Dr. Dishler. Is obesity a problem of willpower, genetics, or physiology? That's a really good question, Dana. Uh, I will tell you that's a huge topic of debate, and actually most doctors don't even know the answer to this because it's really some cutting edge information. Um, it's really common for people to think, well, if you're overweight or you're obese, you just have bad willpower. But what studies are showing is that people who are overweight or are obese have usually kind of an altered physiology that is driving them to maybe make the wrong food choices. So that, you know, if you see someone who looks like they're overeating, it may not be because they just have terrible willpower, or they're a horrible human being, they don't care about their bodies. They're really, really hungry. Their physiology is off. So much, we're learning much more that being overweight or obese is not just because you're you just are weak and pathetic and that you know it's it's not something that people should feel ashamed of or embarrassed about it's something that they should really seek help about because there are a lot of things to do nutritionally medically medication wise that really kind of help reset that kind of fat mass set point that i was talking about um because right. obesity is generally not someone's fault it's not it's a medical condition no different than high blood pressure or high cholesterol it's not your fault. It's like a symptom of the problem. It's a symptom of the problem. And, and just like with high blood pressure, we'll, I will, we'll say to people, well, just lower the salt in your diet. And sometimes that will treat the problem. And someone's high blood pressure really goes down. You know, lower your salt, start to exercise, eat healthier. And people, sometimes people will do that and problem solve. Other people will do that and I'll have them come in and their blood pressure is still 180 over 110. That's mm -hmm. just a genetic problem. They need high blood pressure medication. One medicine might fix it. Another, they might be the second added on. But, you know, if someone's doing everything lifestyle-wise they can to address an issue, like their physical health, um, their weight, and they're just not budging, it's really not their fault. They may need professional help, and so they just need to be treated like we would treat any other medical issue. Yeah. And, and we talked a lot about the aesthetics and the looks of obesity, but it's kind of obvious that it's a health issue. It's like really a health issue. are not only going to potentially die sooner, and they do. Exactly. And they do. Right. Um, but each day, it's like a Wait, who? You die sooner? Okay. Scott? People that are obese die sooner than people that are not obese. And, um, and it's, just, it's a subtle torture throughout the day when you walk out the door and don't feel at the top of your game physically. Um, that yeah. plays a big part in people's anxiety, depression, yep. emotions. They feel older than they actually are. I have people that are in their 70s and 80s that that just shine and do a ton of pull-ups and look you know and and they have other people that are younger than that and they go i don't want to live to be that old but it's not i think the important part is it's not always that person's it's really never that person's yeah. fault you know, there's something in their physiology that's driving them to be hungrier than they should be and most people cases. like any habits that you when you eat bad habits like for instance again this is a nutritional thing but i've 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 recently decided not to eat it like Right. And it was really difficult at first. So you know, I said, I'm I'll have it. Accept it. I'll, take, I'll it. take it. And uh, it was really difficult at first. But mm -hmm. again, my personality, I know if I never do it, I never will do it. That's just me. 
Right. So now it's 701. I won't eat. Do you feel better? I feel a lot better. Now, did I lose any weight? No. Is it's there okay. a, somewhat of, a, of, a, of an overall big time, big picture goal of losing some weight? Yes. But I realize I have a whole bunch of snacks in my refrigerator that sat there for a month. Well, that's a big and in step. my freezer. So you've made a big step. So you've improved health. your health. Yeah. You may not have blood. You know, we, yeah. you know, sometimes when we call them like the non-scale victories, right. you don't have to lose weight to be healthier. Right. And that's a yeah. challenge for a lot of people. Is it when is. They, when they feel like they're sacrificing something, like they're going to the gym, but I'm not losing weight. I'm right. eating better, you're still getting but I'm not healthier. losing weight. Exactly. Still getting healthier, you're still going to live longer. And if you're doing the right thing, you're going to change that set point. Like you're that's right, about. with time. And, right. and it may be that in 10 years, you instead of being you know 180 pounds, you'll be 160 pounds because you're setting the goals for success for your future and for your health. And when you're you know when you're over 50 like I am, there was a time when you had this experience of like if I did the right thing, like a week or two, I was back in the shape I wanted. And then you can you know kind of cheat. It's harder as you get older. But every time I played with my body that way, now I'm like, oh, it doesn't happen that way anymore. And luckily, I've learned to not really obsess over those numbers and the scale. Uh, but just to recognize, and that's just for me personally. This is the kind of stuff that we teach other people because we got to find that little spark that, like, now that I do it, it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I'm now doing it for, for longer than a month. I'm not thinking in my head, okay, I'm only going to have one snack after dinner. No, right. I'm not, I'm sure I'm not having it. You've made a lifestyle change, yeah, and, that, and it'll yeah. hopefully impact you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And exercise the same way. If anyone's ever gone on a circuit of exercise, once you get started, again, this is my person, but we have to find out what each individual's person is like, because some people just can't start. And everybody has different, different situations. Yep. Yeah. And everybody has yeah. different you know, physical challenges and barriers. I mean, for some people, they have to start slow, just walking. Other people, they can... Go right to a you know a CrossFit gym and get started. But everyone's body is different. That's exactly right. That's right. I wanted to I wanted to take a second and just just ask again. Um, everybody watching, this is great. I mean, I know that you know at least you or Dr. Dissler, Sorry, we we initiated the Facebook Live on on your phone, Scott. I don't know that how many of your friends are watching, or actually if you even have friends, I haven't met any of them. But I'm your friend. That's all. That matters. I'm your friend, of course. and your brother is watching you. And by the way, by the way, uh, Scott, your brother said that you are truly the best. That's a great brother. And uh, and at least uh, Joanna Zafriotis Pinkerton said hello. Um, Steve Braslow is watching. Uh, Dana Marie, of course. Uh, Beth Knapp, all these uh, great oh, friends. Great you know, people. Oh, said hello. Fantastic. Yeah, pretty cool. So, guys, if you're watching, A, I want to know, uh, you know, Chris, my friend Chris is watching, you know, what questions do you guys have for the doctors? Of course, we're going to go deep into stuff on June 12th. Not saying you're going to walk out with, you know, a, 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 a fitness plan per se, like a, like a trainer might give you, but some actual um, uh, um, actionable items that you can use just to live more healthfully, to feel well. Right, guys? So the audience, if anybody out there, uh, looks like we have, you know, some people watching, um, write your questions down. I'll make sure that they get asked because the doctors can't see the Facebook uh, live screen. And uh, also, if you want to help your, uh, your brother, your friends, the doctors here, the good doctors, comment in the, in the uh, comment area. And, uh, of course, like or put a heart and share this on your page or some other page. I'm going to shut up now, see if there's any questions. Todd Yorker, howdy from Florida. Howdy back. And uh, I'll let the doctors uh, go. W one, or, one or two more uh, minutes, guys, unless we get another question, and then we'll get people uh, to come out the, on June 12th, hopefully, with some I'd great like, questions. I'd like to share that as they leave these questions, if we don't answer them tonight, we will answer them that night. Absolutely. So all these questions will get handled. If for some reason they don't get handled that night, we'll make sure we personally ask them for you. So just you can keep the questions coming all the way through June 12th, even beyond this Facebook uh, live Q&A. This is just to give you guys an idea of it really a little um, insight into what we're doing. So when the two of us do the program, right. and we have a nice audience of people that are interested. And So uh, how, do, how do people, uh, let's just take 30 seconds each, Dr. Dishler, Dr. Yerker, how do, they're looking right, guys, because I'm in the office to the right. I hope you're not hearing me yeah. twice. But how do people find you? I mean, they can tag both of you on this Facebook and, and just grab you, but if people want to come in for a consultation before the 12th, well, how do they get you guys? Phone numbers? Where's your address? Okay. Well, e mine is easy. I actually have a, a pretty cool website. If you just look up um, weightlosscherryhill.com, that's my website. You can find me through there. 
Um, I have a medical email that people can email me at with any questions. It's edishler, which is E-D-I-S-H-L-E-R, at Weight Loss Cherry Hill, all one big word. Um, and, you know, you can also send me, a, you know, an instant message with a question and, you know, I'll make sure that I get back to you in some way. If, I don't want you to have to memorize my phone number. I have to tell you, my phone number in the office is 856-261-3168. Um, we're opening up again tomorrow morning at 9. You can give us a call. And, you know, I welcome any questions. And, and I always offer to patients if they, have, they want a free consultation about the nutrition, about what I can do for them personally, I'm happy to do a 15-minute phone consultation at no charge, see if we're the right fit. Um, and I actually really enjoy that. So anyone who wants to reach out, please reach out. Yeah, my, uh, my website is philacairo, P-H-I-L-A-C-H-I-R-O.com. And my email is dr, and then my name, S-C-O-T-T-Y-O-R-K-E-R, at gmail.com. My office is located, actually I have two. I have one in Philadelphia at 4th and Fitzwater, and then I have one in Cherry Hill inside the Cats JCC. Um, Dr. Dishler and my office are actually probably about two miles from each other. Just right down Springdale right Road. Right Springdale Road. Road. That's right. Um, if you're coming to her office, it's uh, on 70, just next to Springdale Road. If you're going to mine, you just turn on Springdale Road. And I uh, can always get guest passes for people if they'd like to come check out the whole facility. Outdoor pool is great, too. That's nice. Um, oh, right. And yeah, if someone needs a consult, they're welcome to come in. Um, I do chiropractic and then exercise um, education for the most part of the office. And then if we're looking for the nutrition and the medical assistance. I can do that part. And I like to treat the whole person, not just their weight. Yeah. Phone number is 215-351-1603. Uh, the way I do it now is I actually uh, answer and or return all the calls myself. So. You know, oftentimes we'll call a doctor's office and a lot of receptionists. Mm -hmm. You'll leave a message. If they don't answer, you might hang up. But I'll always leave a message because I'm going to get back to you personally myself. My hours on Monday and Wednesday go from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And on Friday, they go from 9 to 7. And then I uh, do see people on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays um, for specific situations. But with lots of hours on those three days right now. You know, I want to, I want to ask you guys really quickly. Uh, first of all, Christy Phillips asked, what's this about? And at the same time, uh, my friend Hone Houdini Ty escaped from nine to five. He just came on. He's watching. Hone used to be a fitness instructor. And now he uh, teaches people how to invest in real estate. That's where I met Hone. Uh, great guy. Um, what's this about, Christy? On June twelfth at four ninety eight Kings Highway North in Cherry Hill, um, home of uh, my real not my real estate agency. I'm I'm a real estate. I'm a, a licensed uh, realtor salesperson. But um, in in uh, that location, second floor, we're going to be hosting an event. Kevin Zensine. If Ally Morgan is hosting for the two doctors here, um, how to fire up your metabolism. Things that you may not think about, uh, you know, typically people usually just want to grunt away in the gym or, you know, just eat wheat germ for a week. Not fun. So, you know, <laughs> we will find some fun ways to, fi to fire up your metabolism. Hone, maybe you have something to say about that. You used to be a, a physically fit guy, and I know that Hone and Sean Speed have a pull-up competition coming at some point. Uh, but great arms do not uh, a whole fitness uh, uh, body make. You know what I mean. You need more than just strong arms, right? So we'll learn about that, Christy. Um, and Dana Marie asks, can uh, Dr. Elise talk a bit about OptiFast? Uh, not uh, many doctors in South Jay licensed to distribute. So let's take a minute on that, and then we'll wrap up and save the juicy uh, best parts for June 12th. Okay, I can give you a quick Thank you, Dana, for asking that question. I, there are only a handful of doctors really in the area who are OptiFast doctors. OptiFast is a really cool program. It's um, a high protein, high nutrient, like kind of bar and shake diet. We've all heard of them. There are tons of them that, are, that people sell online, but they're, they're not medically monitored while they're losing weight. So OptiFast, you have to be a doctor. You have to be trained for about four months before they even let you become an OptiFast doctor. And it's, it's an unbelievably powerful tool because it's such intense nutrition at such a low calorie count um, that when you monitor somebody and, and, and you put someone on OptiFast and you see them frequently and you work on lifestyle modifications so they can kind of keep up the weight loss that they get while on OptiFast. It's a medical meal replacement program, I should have said that. Um, once you transition them back from OptiFast to just nutritious, healthy food, they have a lot of tools to really remain healthy, remain on a low calorie diet. And it does kind of help reset that set point a little bit and the amazing thing is that the weight loss on OptiFast is, 
an average of 50 pounds in a six month period. Although I do have patients losing weight faster. I had someone who was extremely overweight, who was a patient of mine who's over 500 pounds, who lost 38 pounds in three weeks. And honestly, it was like a changed person in three weeks, just from the impact of, he really just flushed out, a lot of it was water weight, but he just felt so much less bloated and uncomfortable. His legs were all swollen, and he's, he's like a different person after three weeks. He's actually on vacation right now, and he sent me a picture of himself drinking his Octofast shake on a raft in the pool in Cancun. So, so Octofast is a way, and the, and the nice thing is you don't have to use any medication while using Octofast. You lose weight right. quickly, people are losing 20 pounds in a month, and a lot of them are able to get off of their medications for high blood pressure, diabetes, and less pain in their joints really quickly, and the Octofast ends up being cheaper than food. So that was a great question. Thank you for asking. Yeah. One of the nice things about when you say, like, get off the of medication, you hear that mm-hmm. kind of stuff a lot. But it's not a medical doctor also doing the nutritional consultation with them. Right. You know, a lot of the times people talk about being on a nutritional program, and you may get off medications that, but the fact that you're a medical doctor. I can actually monitor your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your labs, and, and so I can really help people. You know, people say, well, I'm going to this diet doctor, I'm going to have to use diet medication, but the goal is to get you overall healthier and on fewer medications in the long run, which Help. will do a lot of great things for people. So, so, so I want to make sure, though, I mean, listen, uh, I didn't know anything about op- the OpiFast, and you and I had spoken, and you'd give me some amazing um, ideas and some, some tweaks that I could make, uh, you know, just to, again, feel better. And uh, I have been trying to get more sleep, and I put in, uh, implemented some of the things that we discussed there. But obviously, not everybody wants to make extreme dietary changes, let's say. So I want to make sure that people have an understanding that what we've mostly discussed, what I've learned from both of you, is that it's mostly lifestyle changes that you can you can implement easily without changing your diet in extraordinary ways. Not that you know attention needs to be put on on diet, but uh, but that's not the product is not the service. The service is the holistic approach that you take. Is that yes or no? Yeah, that's, that's yes. true. Treat the whole person. And when but when we're meeting and interviewing at the beginning, you, you really get a feel for what the per- some people are real committed. They're like, I can just do it if you tell me it's what to do. And other people are like, I really can't give up my dot right. dot dot. And so we find and teach them what that food is. That's the dot dot dot. What its harms are. What it's what what it's good for. Mm-hmm. And then just try to get them into a program that's better this week than last week. That's better right. next month than last month. That when they look back at the year, they did better than the year before. And over time, we'll decide to jump in more and more and more. Or they'll take the little tidbits, and that'll help right. you too. It's really a matter of Don't you think best for small changes sometimes, you know, like you're saying, some people want to make a massive change. It can be overwhelming in any place. Right, but for a lot of people, yeah, like some maybe people. one small change. Yeah. Like, well, can we just get you to go to bed at the same time so you're getting enough rest? That would be huge. And I have some people where their main goal is getting them to sleep better. Yeah. And they feel so much better that they're able to function better the next day. They're able to accomplish more. Mm-hmm. But the little things go a long way. Yeah, and there'll be other people that are going to train for a marathon. Right. We have high-end athletes that are really looking for something more than just. Um, they're not obese at all. They want to know That's what right. their heart rate should be to increase what's called their VO2 max, which is their volume of oxygen intake during exercise. How do these Olympic athletes? How do these, you know, college? Um, scholarship winning athletes uh, achieve those goals you know i cramp when i go exercise how do i exercise and know where my heart rate should be before that cramping feeling happens so i can really push it when does my heart rate go so high that i just fatigue and drop and this is the kind of information we go over with the exercises to learn what that is for you and allow you to achieve your you know level of optimal performance well, guys, this has been uh, this has been awesome. I know that you wanted to make sure you wanted me to make sure that we save the juiciest, best stuff for the twelfth because that personal interaction will have the most positive impact on people's lives and their health, and it's more interesting. And maybe they'll end up working with you. Maybe you'll end up working with them. Who knows what you know what uh, what some of these other uh, some of our friends coming you know what their occupations are. But it's all about interaction, guys. It's all about you know. You can be at home on the couch eating chips, binge watching Netflix, or you can be with us on June 12th at 7 p.m., 498 Kings Highway North in Cherry Hill, learning how to feel better physically, mentally, and see all kinds of positive, what positive effects that can have on you. Thanks to these amazing two people. Uh, 
Dr. Dishler, Dr. Yorker. Thanks very much, guys. I can't wait for the 12. Kevin's end scenes on. It's going to be awesome. Thanks, 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 Thanks so much, Thanks, Andy. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. All right, guys. Thank you.